Hallelujah. Well, good evening. Welcome. You guys can say welcome also. Come on now. Uh, uh, good evening. Welcome to our, the middle of the week. This is, uh, this is the time when we uh, pour our second can of spinach in, you know, and keep on rolling. And uh, we, we keep rolling and we make it happen. So God bless you. Thank you for your time with us. Uh, we believe that any moment in the presence of the Lord God has the possibility of changing you, your destiny, your family, everything about you. So please give attention tonight because uh, we're still talking about destiny. And this is really going to help you to edify and to bring those particular dreams that you've always had or things that you've desired from the Word of God to make those things manifest in your life. Amen. Again, we love you guys out there. Thank you for joining us from all over the world, 50-some nations, almost 60 now. And uh, that's, uh, that is a, a miracle of Almighty God, I can tell you that. All right. All right. Well, you guys go grab your chicken leg, wherever you are, take your seat at home. People in here, they're going to sit down. They're not going to eat. It's not, one of those, it's not one of those coffee joint churches, all right? All right. So you guys can take your seats and let's hop into the Word of God tonight, all right? Because there are some places, you know, that you can come in and eat popcorn, have a drink and all that and whatever, and, you know, then discuss, you know, the bag of popcorn. We're not that kind of church, all right? We're a remnant church of the Lord Jesus Christ filled with the Holy Ghost, and uh, we believe in uh, all the divine principles of the Word of God, that they should be a part of our life every day, not just talk about them, but to live those things, become those things. Uh, in Acts chapter uh, 1, uh, we see Jesus talking to uh, his disciples, and he's talking about the power of the Holy Spirit to wait until you be endued with power from on high. And it's very important for you as a Christian to understand uh, the dynamics of the work of the Holy Spirit, okay? Uh, because he's not just a something or something told me this or whatever. No, he's a, he's a divine person, third person that we recognize in the Trinity, all right? And he's come because of believers. He's not here for unbelievers. He's here for believers, okay? And so as you walk through destiny, and when I say destiny, I'm talking about the divine events that God himself uh, rolls forth like a flood in some cases uh, so that you might be carried into something different than you are, uh, even a whole total different lifestyle, okay? And, uh, and we see that all the time. Uh, miracles, they go with the Spirit of God, okay? And when you're talking about defeating the enemy, he's got so much light that darkness can't stay around him. I'm just, I'm just letting you know that he's the person that helps us to carry us through our destiny. So uh, join us tonight as we go into another segment of this because I'm just trying to get you ready for what's going to happen, all right? For what has already been spoken, all right, and for what's going to happen and even though some people aren't expecting it, guess what? God always expects his word to come to pass, all right? So he don't need a man to be God. He's God all by himself, all right? So tonight we go to uh, the book of Ecclesiastics. So come go with me. This is another uh, set of scriptures that, that speak about destiny, all right? And destiny, again, uh, it, is, uh, it is just absolutely important for you guys to really understand the power of it. Sometimes it happens around you and you don't even recognize it's going on, all right? It's like the drag rag, <laughs> all right? Something crossed your path, and guess what? You think that it is something that's going to really help you, and, uh, and it doesn't, not in my instance, it doesn't help you at all, okay? Uh, because it leads to some form of destruction that you didn't know was waiting there. The man and a woman who picked up the first cigarette in high school or start drinking with a club or whatever, they didn't realize that that was going to lead them to something later on in life, cirrhosis of the liver or, you know, cancer or lung cancer. They didn't know that when they first picked up that first cigarette. Uh, but guess what? One after the other, they just kept following that trail, and it, and it led them there. And so when it comes down to destiny, the events that God rolled out, the important factor is that we know how God's working. Not just that you just know what the words say, but I need to recognize his ways what he's doing so that when those things are presented, then I, I know without a shadow of a doubt, that's the Lord doing this. See, then there's a certainty of your faith. See, without a wavering faith, you know, well, today, well, I thought it was, but no, 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 no. When, when destiny speaks, there's a certainty 
that's going to happen, all right? And when you know how, when God is doing something and how God is saying things and the way he works and does things, we don't know everything. Well, we're not God. We don't know everything about how he does things, but we do know what he reveals to us if we study it out, okay? Not just reveal, but if we study it out, okay? So in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, now this is again, verse 1 through 8, is talking about destiny. And it says this, to everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. So we're talking about things within this atmosphere. We're not talking about things outside of this atmosphere. We're talking about things, the events that happen within the, the realm of the world, the earth, all right? And he says, a time to be born and a time to die. There's a time to plant, okay? All of these are destiny things, okay? It's a time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted. Now, you'll notice that in this is talking about when it's talking about a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is, is planted. It's talking about some forms of actions, okay? And these are faith actions. These are not just general actions. These are faith actions, okay? Things that are taking place. A time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up. There's also a time to weep. Anybody ever whip? That's right, okay? Uh, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. As you guys said, y'all were before the service started tonight. All right? Dancing in the Holy Ghost. I didn't see nobody move. All right? You know, dead people don't move, do they? <laughs> All right? It says there's a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and then there's a time to refrain from embracing. Okay? These are destiny seasons. All right? And it says the time to get and a time to lose. And there's also, guess what? There's a time to keep and a time to cast away. See, destiny. Sometimes you have to leave certain things. All right? Cast certain things away. Remember Abraham? He had to leave his family, his country, and whatever. He had to leave. Some of you had to leave your family. And let me tell you something else. Before it's all over, there's going to be some other things you probably going to have to leave that you don't know about. Somebody say yet things. Yeah. All right, yet things. All right? A time to rent and a time to so. There's a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and there's a time of peace, all right? But you'll notice that in all of these times, somebody is involved in these things. A person is involved in these things, letting us know that God used people to bring forth destiny, okay? That could be you at any time. I know certainly we never thought that we'd be doing anything like this when we came up. You know, and so you have to realize that when God's speaking about destiny, anybody and anything, because all of us, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, all of us are in the, in the opportunity class that God can grab you and do this and do this and do this. Some of the greatest miracles that have happened around the world have happened through people that nobody ever thought that they would have ever been anything. And God has taken them and raised them up to do a certain thing or to do this or to do this or to do that work or to make that happen. Anybody in the house with me tonight? All right. And so when destiny is speaking, all right, please write this down real quick. Because in this appointed time, in each time, in each time that you read there, all right, someone is needed for a faith decision. In each one of those, it takes faith to birth a child. It takes faith to cast away. These are actions. These are faith decisions, all right? In each one of these, you'll notice, and every moment brings the arrival of that needed gift. Whatever gift you need to do that, all right, that gift comes so that that part of your life can be fulfilled. See? My, one of my teachers many years ago told me, he says, you know, what's the most important gift? The one that's needed at the time, all right? So if I don't need money and I need this, I need this, I need this. I don't need money right now. I need this. Now, I'll take the money. <laughs> But, but I need this, all right, because this is what's going to cause me to make this decision of faith that I might get through this particular time or this particular season. I need that, all right? And so destiny is very wise, comes from the wisdom of God, but it is very instructive also because it gives us, uh, you guys went to the, the wisdom class with me uh, uh, last year, year before last one, was it year before last? And uh, what did I say? Wisdom has what? Directional arrows, 
that are always pointing to this or always pointing to that so that you might make the right turn. That means that you're going to make the right decision, okay? And so when we get into these particulars about which, you know, this divine event taking place and destiny speaking to us, you know, destiny, destiny doesn't shout out, holler and scream at people and, you know, and all the stuff that some people say. Most of the time, destiny is a still small voice. And it's speaking to you and you've got to have enough clarity in you that you don't have so many other voices speaking to you all right this is why it's so important to understand motivation see motivation on our part is one of the greatest things that you and I can have and it comes from the word of God all right come on go with me to the book of Joel real quick all right Joel let's see where are we going here Joel okay y'all with me chapter 2 and you can find this all through the Bible. All right? See, when I care about things, my caring qualifies me to be an instrument of healing, of instruction, of resources. Again, my caring. See, most people don't care about a whole lot of things. Right? The other day, uh, I was at the, uh, when I left here, I stopped at the road down here, and I'm, I'm here to the Caroline. Uh, so when I get to the turn down there, there's this, this truck, he was in front of me. And when he got to the turn, you know, he stopped, he stopped, and then the light turned green, you know, and he's still sitting there, you know. So I'm sitting there, I'm going like, okay, does he see the, does he see the light that's green? And I got all these cars behind me, you know, somebody's honking a horn. I didn't honk my horn, I'm watching the guy in the truck. So he's in the truck, man, he's got his, you know, insanity, uh, social insanity is crazy these days. <laughs> He's got his hands, he's going, his hands thrown up in the truck, you know. He's throwing his hands up, and I'm sitting in, I'm sitting there behind him, I'm watching him, I'm going like, okay, what's wrong with this guy? Well, guess what? The light turned green again, he ain't moved. He in there throwing his hands up. So uh, then all of a sudden, guess what? You know, he got out of his truck and walked back to me. And I'm sitting there going, I said, oh boy, here we go. And he walked, <laughs> I did. I reached right back, I did. I carried all the time. He got out of his truck and he walked back to me. And when he got to me, he says, he says, I, I, I'm sorry, uh, I got there and the truck just cut off, the battery, it ain't no good, it, ain't, it won't start, whatever. And I said, I said well, that's fine, man. I said, all you need to do is get out and tell somebody what's going on, you know? And he said, well, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know, and we've been there for 10 minutes fooling with the light turning twice. When all he had to do is get out and come back and say, listen, my car's broke down. You know, I said, somebody would have helped you push across the road or something. But he was just sitting in the truck just going like this, you know, I'm going like, Social insanity. Something happened, boom, everybody blows up. And I'm going like, all you need to do is get out and help somebody to find out who cares because if somebody cared, they can be an instrument to help you. And most people don't do that. You try to, you try to socialize your insanity upon your thought life and then, then want to blame everybody else instead of just going like, you know some, I need some help doing this. So if I need some help, all I need to do is find somebody to care. And if I find somebody to care, then guess what? I can be helped. Are y'all with me? All right? And I hope you guys get that out there because you don't have to go off because your car ain't starting. <laughs> you go out in the morning, frost on the windshield, you don't have to get mad at your neighbors. I'm just telling you. All right? It's all kinds of stuff. Now, in, now we're talking about this particular thing. And this is why it shows you the importance. This particular scripture is just one. The importance of using the word of God. Okay? Because you need motivation to get through things, okay? You need it every day. Most people make decisions based on escaping pain. You make financial decisions because you try to escape pain. Relational, ex you know, decisions, why? Because you're trying to escape pain. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. We make decisions, most of them, because we're trying to avoid pain. Look at see, nobody give no amens on that one, boy, because everybody's thinking about, well, pain is something. Yeah, yeah, and we make most of our decisions. And, and so if I take the word of God, okay, for my motivation, then my motivation will cause the author of sin, okay? It'll cause the author of sin to leave because all pain is trying to get you to do, all right? is to get you to make a decision that it knows it's going to be something that's going to be lasting for a while. 
So it can constantly be in your mind or in your body or in your relationships or whatever. Instead of going to the Word of God and saying, you know something, the Word of God is my motivation. I'm going, and this is what I'm going to say, and this is what I'm going to speak, and this is how I'm going to think about it, whatever. So because, because your motivation sets the atmosphere for, your, for your, your harvest, your dream, your whatever. See, you know, you, you can't grow watermelons in, in, uh, in, in the Antarctic because the atmosphere is not conducive for that. So why would you stand on the ice and put a seed in the ice and stand there and keep confessing it? This is my mom. I'm going to have, man, I'm going to have the biggest watermelon crop in the world. And you just stand in there doing that. that you, 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 you're not in the right atmosphere, all right? So, so if, I'm, if I'm in a place where, you know, my wife and I, we grew up in poverty. You know, I'm, my poverty met her poverty. She, her poverty jumped over the box and fell into my poverty, you know. And so, we, <laughs> and so we grew up in poverty, you know. I've had cars that looked like they had three wheels on them when you were riding them, you know, and stuff. But, but if you want to stay in that kind of an atmosphere, just stay around people that think that's okay. All right, just stay around them, and they'll tell you, oh, well, just go on and fix that. Well, that'll be okay. Well, well why don't you just put different tires on it? Well, why don't you just, do you stay around that kind of, I mean, you're not going to move, okay? But, but if you, you're riding a three-wheel car, <laughs> and somebody tell you, hey, listen, man, come on now, hold on. You can do better than that. You mean I can do, yes, you can do better. Listen, listen, let's, let's, let's go, let's go throw, give that to the junkyard, and let's get something else. Let's start off here, and then as we start off here, we'll grow here, then we'll grow to this, and we'll grow to this, and we'll grow to this. So that guess what? When you look back later on, you can say, man, God is making me laugh because I came from a long way driving an old piece of junk and up and down the road, and I thought I was making it, you know? But now when I get in my car, it smells like it's brand new. See, are you guys with me? All I'm saying is the atmosphere that you set for stuff causes your seed to become what it's supposed to become. All right? If I, if I take butter beans and I take them out in the desert, the Mojave Desert, put them in the ground, let me tell you something, that, that, that heat would burn them up before they even got to even, to even begin to, to root. All I'm saying is you have the opportunity every day yourself through the Word of God, all right, to make the motivation of your life cause the things of life that you want to come to you. Nobody's going to do that. The, the author of sin, who's the devil, he ain't going to do that. He's going to always send something to you to make you just go like short come, short come, short come. In other words, I want to microwave this, I want to microwave that, I want to microwave this, instead of understanding the principles and how God operates and what God does for us. And you use your mouth to do a lot of that. Now, here's a, here's a, here's a motivation scripture. This is, I, just, I just use this one. They're all through the Bible. But I use this one because a lot of times, People don't understand that God wants restoration in their life. See, and if I'm always thinking restoration, then that's the atmosphere that I have around me, okay? So whatever it was lost, somebody's going to bring it back this way or that way or whatever. So that atmosphere is always going to rain. Guess what? Everything that you want is going to be rain on you, and sometimes you're going to have to get an umbrella out to hold up the rain. He says this in verse 27, verse 25, verse 24. <laughs> you read all of this for yourself, all right? Because we're going to jump into some other things here. But it says this. Be glad, verse 23. Be glad then, you children of Zion. Now, that's prophetic for the church. All right? And rejoice in the Lord your God. For he have given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. So that's double for your trouble. All right? This is what God's saying. The first and the last are going to come together. All right, when the first and the last come together and pull on you, boy, you're going to have a whole lot more than you would have in the beginning. Then he says, and the floors, and the floors shall be full of wheat, and the vaults shall, shall overflow with wine and oil. Now, this is new life, and this is power. This is anointing, and this is new life. This is what he's talking about here, okay? And this is, again, motivation. When I motivate, when I say what God says, guess what? It creates an atmosphere around me. Then guess what? That atmosphere says, okay, we're going to make that seed grow. Or we're going to cause this to happen. Or divine reversal is going to take place around somebody. And guess what? Somebody, God's going to appoint somebody to come into your life and give you something that you lost or something that maybe you thought, you know, you, you misplaced it in life somewhere, you know? And he's going to do this. But this is motivation. And this is why I tell you guys, these are the things that help you get through life instead of always thinking about how can I get this done? How can I get that done? No, keep yourself motivated even when you don't hear God speaking to you. All right? Keep yourself motivated with his word. 
Never let his word get away from you. It says this, and I will restore to you the years. Somebody said, oh, hallelujah. See, I will restore to you the years. Anybody got any years you like getting restored? You know, all that money they took from you guys when y'all went to college? <laughs> See, that's a better way. My wife and I, we went to college, but guess what? Somebody paid for it all. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just telling you, there's a lot of things that guess what? I see people fanning. Y'all getting hot, aren't you? Y'all getting hot. Y'all get y'all butt burn up tonight, right? Okay, that's all right. But motivate yourself. Guess what? Because when you motivate yourself, by his stripes I am healed. That's what the word says. And guess what? God watches over his word. No, none of his word returns to him void. So guess what? God has already said what's going to happen. That's my destiny to walk in health. So I'm going to walk in health. This is my destiny. See, God has spoken it. This is not something that I wrote or you wrote, okay? No child would ever write, children obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. No child would, no child would ever write that. And that's in the word of God, all right? No child would ever write that. So guess what? It motivates a child and they go, well, you know something, I'm supposed to obey my parents? And that's the first, that's the first word direct from God with promise of life. And I want life, so guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to obey my parents as much as I possibly can and everything, and whatever they say. I motivate myself with those things like that. You've got to motivate yourself with whatever's in this Word of God that's going to help you, all right? Because in these three particular, these laws of sub substitution, when you go to Romans chapter 12, when you go to 1 Corinthians and, and uh, uh, chapter 6, and when you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, when you go to these particulars, all of these are particulars that share with you how to substitute the, the thoughts of your, of your life for the things of God so that you can have yourself a feel of motivation every day. We're going to look at some of them in a moment. Come on, go with me. Let's finish this up because you got to need some motivation. All right? You know, when I say 1,680 more, guess what I do? I put the more on it because I know God's going to do more, more than I could actually think. That's why the more is there. I motivate myself all the time. See, and when I say it, guess what? That's what I'm talking about. I'm building an atmosphere that, guess what? If you ain't here when it's raining, it don't mean that it ain't going to rain. It's just, you just going to miss it. But that's all it means, all right? He says this, I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten and the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you, and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that have dwelt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. See, this motivates me. Lord, I don't care. It don't matter what's happening. Guess what? You've already told me in the book of, of, of Timothy that those who trouble me have troubled you, and you're going to trouble them. <laughs> so I understand that, guess what? I'm motivated. I'm going to tell you right now. This is why y'all guys don't see me walking in here going, oh, well, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> You've never seen me. Nobody's ever seen me like that. Why? Because I motivate myself every morning. Seven times a day, I motivate myself. You know, regardless of what's happening, nope, it's going to be like this. You know, me and the Holy Spirit was talking to the flesh uh, 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 about, about the flesh. And I told the Holy Spirit, I said, he don't like you, do it. <laughs> and, uh, and the Holy Spirit told me, he says, no, he don't, because guess what? He's temporal, and he knows I'm eternal. So guess what? He knows he's passing away. I was, I was, like, I was going like, wow, look at this. See, you guys got to get this grip on yourself of, who you are in Jesus Christ and enjoy your life be glad and stop being so sad all the time you know and it'll never work out the way you want to work out but if you let God work it it'll work out the way God wanted to work out you know and it's gonna always be better with him he shall he says this you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else and when he's talking about Israel here prophetically he spoke he's speaking about Israel both natural and and spiritual whom we are, okay? And he says, I am the Lord your God and none else, and my people, see, this is why he's saying that, my people shall never be ashamed, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. In other words, you're going to motivate your atmosphere. Shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams. Well, you guys that are old, y'all dream now. All right, because I'm still a young man and I'm seeing visions. So I'm just telling you guys, <laughs> y'all can do what y'all want to do, but you need to pick what you're going to do, all right? All right? And upon all the servants and upon all the servants and the handmaidens in those days, I will pour out my spirit. And he keeps on talking about things. See, these are the kinds of scriptures that motivate you and they set the atmosphere. 
And when you believe in God for things, the Lord has already said this. The Lord's already said this. Because the flesh and the devil and the world are always going to try to talk to you. All right? Destiny speaks. And this is destiny speaking to us, letting us know, listen, it ain't going to be like you think it is. It's going to be like God said it is. I know it looks like this today, but guess what? It's going to be different. Just hold on. Keep your patience. In your patience, you possess your soul. All right? So the atmosphere you per permit, because you permit it, the devil can't stop you from speaking. All right? The atmosphere that you permit is going to produce the particular product that you're really after. If you're after peace, then you have to talk about peace. You have to speak it. The Lord gave me peace. I have peace. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the peace. Your peace can actually make the wind stop blowing. Thank you. That's the peace that abides in me. All right? Your peace can make the waves lay down. So guess what? That's the peace that abides in me. So I thank you, Lord God, for peace every day. And get up and be word and go and, and lay back down in your word when you lay back down. What are you, you, you going to produce? All you're going to produce is a worry child. You know? So just go get your lazy boy and sit back and worry because you ain't moving. You ain't going nowhere. All right? But all you're going to do is just sit there and worry, worry, worry. No, 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 no. When you get into peace, peace begins to bring you answers. See? It begins to show you that it ain't as bad as you thought it was. And, and this can do this and this. This is, the, this is the way destiny is, all right? All right, now we go to Romans chapter 12 real quick. I told you I might run over these, so let me run over these real quick. You guys don't mind because y'all ain't got nowhere to go. Romans chapter 12. Y'all gonna go home and lay down tonight and y'all gonna say, oh, peace, be still. You know, and make sure you... You turn that TV off so you ain't looking at that little crazy stuff on there. Well, I just got to see the general hospital, see who's sick. That ain't no atmosphere for health. I can tell you that. <laughs> I can tell you that. Looking at all the cop shows. Nothing wrong with what those guys do. They lay their life down. But all you're going to do is think about crime. <laughs> <laughs> well, how, why do you think all the criminals watch, watch so much stuff like that? So they can figure out how to do stuff. It, it builds an atmosphere. All right? Divorce court. You don't want to look at divorce court. The spirit that's there on the people that come in and they present that to you through TV, they're telling their vision about why they do, and you will say, I, well, I just got to know, I can tell you right now. You know, don't look at that and expect to be married, and don't look at that and expect to stay married. Romans chapter 12. <laughs> we talking about destiny, right? Somebody say destiny. destiny. All right, I got to bring y'all back, because when I say things, y'all y'all minds just start going everywhere. All right? Destiny, God's events. He says this. Now, here's the, here, here are some of the laws of substitution. This is why I say when God speaks something, when the Lord brings something forward, you must always keep these particular things forward in your mind because the enemy is going to always, always, always bring things against you. We call them naysayers. We call them people that don't believe this and don't believe that. You can name them whatever you want to name them, but there's a spirit behind people trying to hold you uh, in a place where they know that you're going to stay in poverty or you're going to stay in sickness or you're going to stay in lack and all this stuff. You're going to stay frustrated. No, no, no. There's a, there's a spirit behind all those things. We call them inner loopers. They came in when Adam sinned. So when Adam sinned, all those things came in. And guess what? Those things have been working and they have been doing a tremendous work on a lot of people's minds. Okay? Keeping people bound. He says this. And please get this. My wife taught this probably 45 years. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Now, he's begging these people, all right? That you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service, all right? So this is everything within you, all right? And he says, and be not conformed to this world, all right? This is the only world you got right now, all right? Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed. All right? By the renewing of your mind. Okay? So his substitution coming. That you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect, the will of God. Okay? So God's will comes into threes, as I've told you guys over years and years and years, that God brings us into perfection through things of threes. 
okay? And so he's saying here now that understand that you can, you can, if you renew your mind, you'll begin to go from this place in God's will to this place in God's will to this place in God's will, okay? So that you and the will of God now form a perfect set of twins, all right? Where the, where the word of the king is, there's power. And so you have renewed your mind to a point now that guess what? All your mind thinks is the word of God. It doesn't think anything else. It doesn't go to another option, okay? We don't want to do that. So this is the, the law, under the laws of substitution, how we can start putting the word of God in my mind to get rid of the stuff that's always been in my mind, okay? I always been, well, you know, everybody in our family, they go through this at this time of the year. You know, it seems like the flu just goes around. Well, why don't you give the flu some distance and tell the flu to go way around? <laughs> Are you guys with me? I mean, just give some, you know, uh, everything is, 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 we, we grow up like that. Anybody ever grow up like that? Everything you ever, anybody in here ever drink cast oil? Oh, okay. You got that, huh? That's right. Vicks, vapor rub, swallow it, rub it on your chest. <laughs> Come on, why? why? All those things were passed, all those things were passed on around to us. Why? Because our parents and grandparents and whatever, they used that stuff, and that was the only thing they had to use and whatever, whatever. Nobody likes drinking cast oil. Even the bottle that it comes in don't like it. You know, I'm just saying, it's, I'm just saying, nobody likes that stuff, you know? But things come to us, and then we accept things, and then guess what? We pass them on to our kids. Now, some things our parents brought to us were great, great things. But then there was some stuff that was just going like, boy, if I ever get old enough that I don't have to take this anymore, I ain't taking this anymore, you know? And, and we do that. Well, this is what I'm saying. We learn to substitute things in life because all of us, as I've said, we grow in this world, we came in this world, we are hunters. So we, when, we, when we hunt for something we're going to hunt for something that's different than cast oil. All right? I don't know about you, but I know about me. All right? We go to 2 Corinthians real quick, chapter 4. Come, come, come. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, again, here we go into substitution. Because these are the, the principles that get us through destiny. Each one of those particulars is a time for this, is a time for this, is a time for this. It involves a person. And that person has to be as wise as they possibly can because we're dealing with an enemy that's been here since the first Adam. All right? The first Adam. You notice that you look at the world? Who caused it to be destroyed? Sin. The author of sin. What you look at today is a destroyed world. We've not seen the beauty of God's creation. See? We've not seen that, all right? And so you have to realize that everything that the enemy gets us in, involved in, it becomes something destructive, see? To the point that what God created was so beautiful, you and I are not living in that right now, see? And God's waiting to give us a brand new one. <laughs> I can tell you that, all right? He's waiting to give us a brand new one because he's going like, I'm going to show you what I can do. You know, he's waiting to give us a brand new one, all right? It says here, verse 13, we have in the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believe and therefore I have spoken. We also believe and therefore what? Therefore we speak. We speak because we believe, right? All right, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise us up also by Jesus and shall present us with you for all things are your for your sake that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God for which cause we faint not but though our outward man perish yet the inward man is renewed day by day for our light affliction which is but for a moment working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory while we look not at the things which are seen Destiny ain't looking at what you, what you have right now or where you are right now, all right? Destiny is looking far ahead. He says, for we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. See, those are the eternal rewards, the eternal blessings, the eternal events, the things that God has ushered in that are going to be eternal because those things will always be kept. 
All right? We go to 2 Corinthians chapter, oh boy, chapter 10 real quick. Come, 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 come. Verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations. Here again, law, 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 law of what? Substitution. See, just like when I speak, I'm substituting what I, something, something, somebody showed me this or that. No, I don't want that. I want this. God showed Abraham. He says, call those things which be not as though they are until they are. So call those things, speaking things, I'm changing things. And here he says, casting out imaginations, every high thing exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So when you fulfill things, then guess what? You go back after the enemy and say, ha, 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 see, I told you, I told you, I won't follow you, the author of sin. Jesus said, it is written. See, the enemy played that game on Jesus. Jesus just looked at him and said, it is written. It's written. It's written. Can't scratch it out. It's written. There ain't no ink that can remove the word of God. You know, you can't cover it over like, well, I'm going to cover that up. I'm going to darken that out. And I'm going to strike that out. And I'm going to put something else. Nope. Can't happen. So we go to 2 Kings. Y'all ready to venture beyond your seats? 2 Kings chapter 6. Hey, hey. I don't see nobody dancing in the Holy Ghost. Y'all's all up in here tonight. We're not dancing the Holy Ghost. Well, we come up here. Maybe we're stopping. I'll lay hands on everybody. Then all y'all can dance in the Holy Ghost. Y'all dance out of your shoes. <laughs> in 2 Kings chapter 6, here we go. The king of Syria, verse 24. Got to roll with this now. He was ticked off because guess what? He had sent after these people one time, after Elisha one time, and Elisha actually sent the army back after he fed them. <laughs> sent the army back, and then guess what? Uh, this man, he's regrouped now. And it says, and there was a great famine in Samaria, and behold, they besieged it until an ass's head was sold for four score pieces of silver. And the fourth part of a cab of a, of a dove's, dove's dung was for five pieces of silver. That's a tough time, man. Huh? You ain't been there, have you? See? Things can get tight. And it says this. Now, they were, they were under, be, you know, the city was besieged. So guess what? The armies was all the way around them. Nobody could get in. Nobody could get out. And, and once you run out of food and water... You know, you get down to uh, survival mode in the fittest. And these people were doing all kinds of things to survive. Okay, you've never been there. You talk about high prices and this and that and all that, but you've never been there. You can still go to the store and buy something, you know, or go dig down in the bottom of that freezer. <laughs> <laughs> you stored up something two years ago. <laughs> Guess what? You're going to bring it out and you're going to say, you know something? I'm going I'm to make this work tonight. <laughs> you're going you to make that work, all right? But guess what it says? And it says, the king, now, now check this out. And then the king of Israel is passing upon the wall and there cried a woman unto him saying, help my Lord, O king. And he said, if the Lord do not help thee, when shall I help thee? Out of the barn floor or, or out of the wine press? And the king said unto her, What aileth thee? And she, she answered and said, This woman said to me, Give thy son, that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. It must have been a small boy. Because they're going to eat him, boy, they was hungry. <laughs> but they're going to eat the child so that they can survive. So we bore my son. Tell me that wasn't a, a demonic gate open that you'll kill your child to live. Not only kill him, but you'll kill him and eat him. Hmm? So we boiled my son and we did eat him. And I said unto her on the next day, give thy son that we may eat him. And she, 
she has hid her son. And I'm hungry enough to eat him. I'm looking for him, but she hid him. See, you ain't been there yet. You don't want to be here. This is why every day you need to serve the Lord with gladness. Because this Bible shows us examples over and over of people, guess what, who went through all kinds of stuff. Knew nothing about the Lord's provision or his faithfulness. All right? To kill your child. To eat your child. And then to look for your neighbor's child the next day. To eat your neighbor's child. You see how far sin will take you? The power and the author of sin, what he'll do to you because he don't care nothing about you. And yet we got people all the time serving him or whatever, and he's probably laughing. He don't care nothing about you. All he wants to do is hurt God's creation, you know? Because he was the one that God had put all the pump in, and he was the one that God said, boop, and kicked him out. I'm telling you right now, you, you don't know what you're dealing with. And sometimes you're playing Christian. You need to not play Christian. You need to be on that board, you know? It says this. It came to pass when the king heard the words of the woman. What did he hear? He heard her words. What kind of an atmosphere do you think that set? What kind of motivation do you think that set with him? Hmm? Hearing those kinds of words. Huh. Please. That he rent his clothes and he passed upon the wall and the people looked and behold, he had sackcloth within under his, upon his flesh. And then he said, God do so and, all, and more also to me. If the head of Elisha, the son of Sephat, shall, shall stand on, on him this day. In other words, he got ticked off at the man of God. Why? Because it was just a little while ago that you let all of them, that, that army go back. You fed them and then and sent them back. And now they've come here and besieged the whole city, you know, because of what you said to do. Huh. Elisha sat in his house and the elders sat with him. And the king sent a man from before him. And ere the, the messenger came and he said unto the elders, see, and this is what Elisha said. He said, see how the son of a murderer have sent to take away mine head. He knew what he was thinking before he got there. Huh. Look, when the messenger comes in, shut the door and hold him fast at the door. <laughs> it's not the sound of his master's feet behind him. See, Elisha, th these guys, man, when God spoke to these guys and these guys, these guys knew stuff, man. You know? And that same gifting is in the church today. And while he had talked with them, behold, the messenger came down unto him and he said, behold, this evil is of the Lord. What should I wait for the Lord any longer? Then Elisha said this, hear the word of the Lord. Here's destiny speaking. Thus says the Lord, tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shackle. Two measures of barley for shackle in the gate of Samaria. And then a Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but you shall not eat thereof. All right? So this, Elisha speaks this, voice of destiny because this is his atmosphere he walked with Elijah you know he saw this man do all kinds of things and he had this double uh, mantle on him from Elijah so guess what this is the atmosphere he's living in you know even though he's there in the city you know he ain't living the way they're living you know he ain't in there trying to trying to cut nobody up and eat nobody he's sitting there going like I, I got a word from the Lord the word from God is going to change everything and you'll notice that it says this he didn't go out and pronounce it to the city. Tomorrow, let's stand on the hill and let's talk about this. No, 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 no. He didn't do any of that. He just told those in the house with him and the king that came and the man that came that was acting so ugly. He said, tomorrow, about this time. He didn't say this afternoon. He did not say that because guess what? He was saying exactly what God wanted on time is a time for everything. 
He didn't say, this, this afternoon, this is going to happen. This, no, no, no. This afternoon, people were still running and trying to find kids to kill. He didn't say this evening. Nope. This evening, people were still worried. They were still worried about where they're going to get their next meal. <laughs> Y'all sitting here thinking real hard now, aren't you? Don't think too hard, all right? You might hurt your brain. All right? <laughs> he said, he's thinking, he said, he didn't say, tonight this is going to change. Nope. He spoke about the event against God's enemies. He said, tomorrow, in other words, God was saying, I'm going to get rid of your enemies, and when I get rid of your enemies, then you're going to see things that you were not expecting today. And that's what prophetic words do. They go into the voice of the spirit realm, and they pronounce things against your enemies, and they cause your enemies now to dismiss the voice or the sound that they had that they thought they would have victory over you to the point that now they have a sound that they are being defeated. All right? This is the way prophetic destiny words are spoken. All right? When, 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 when Elisha spoke this, guess what? All of a sudden, everything in that realm changed. Okay? No different, than, no different than he did when that army came and he said, he told the Lord, he says, open up my servant's eyes so he can see that there's more with us than it is with, with them. He, the, and it was no different. When he spoke, the spirit realm opened up. All right? And the things that he spoke, he was saying that this is what's going to happen because God has to deal with your enemy in order for you to get what you really want. And it ain't no different today. God still got to deal with your enemy. He didn't say that, oh, people are going to stop worrying because I spoke this word. He didn't say that, guess what, people are going to stop doing this or they're going to stop looking for a donkey or they're going to stop looking for a mule around the corner. He didn't say any of that. He didn't even say, listen, don't worry, not another moment. He did not say any of that because people were going to worry. Even though when you could stand up and the sky could open up, people still going to worry because guess what, they're so much bent on, the, on what's before them, what they see instead of what they don't see. And it is what you don't see that brings you the blessing and the joy of Almighty God, which you don't see with your physical eyes. And it says this. Now, now check this out now because this is good. It says that there were four lepers. We know four represents the number of what? Creation. All right? So God's going to use four people that are insignificant. See? And this is why I tell you, you got to always remember the earth says the Lord's in the fullness thereof. He'll use whoever he wants to. And it says, there were four lepers, lepers men at the entering of the gate. And it says, they said to one another. Listen, they're going to have a conversation now about destiny. Why sit here till we die? I mean, what are we going to sit here for? If we say we're entering into the city, then the famine is in the city and we know we're going to die there. And now if we sit here, we know we're going to die here. So now... And see, there's three parts of this. He says, they say, so now therefore come and let us fall into the, into the host of the Syrians. And if they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die because we're going to die if we sit here. If we go in the city, we're going to die. <laughs> so guess what? Let's face the best scenario in death. And maybe the mercy of God will help somebody to give us or to help us in some way. Are you guys with me? So they rose up in the twilight. And it says to go to the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the, to the uttermost part of the camp of the Syrians, behold, there was not a man there. Why? Why? Because of what was spoken tomorrow about this time. See, another sound came into the spirit realm. And look what that sound did in the spirit realm. And it does the same thing for you today when you say what God says. He says, for the Lord made the host of the, the Syrians to hear a noise, <laughs> a noise of chariots and a noise of horses and even the noise of a great host. And guess what? That voice of victory changed to a voice of defeat. This is what I'm telling you about saying things. When you start saying things and you mean what you say, then guess what? The enemy starts changing what he's been saying about you. When you start saying that I'm rich and I'm not poor, then guess what? He starts changing his mind because he knows that rich is going to give victory over his, over his demons of poverty against your life. And guess what? All of a sudden, there's a breaking that takes place. 
And that voice of a breaking takes place in the whole realm to the point that guess what? All he hear now is that you are rich and not poor anymore. But if you just sit there and submit to it and say, well, I'm just, you know, nothing ever going to happen to me good. Well, you just produce your atmosphere and they just pour more water on it. And they just grow that seed that you just sowed in the ground. They just pour more water on it and they make it become, guess what? He's just going to stay poor all his life. But if you listen, the way God talks, God even said in one scripture, he says, if I was hungry, I wouldn't tell you. What does that mean? Simply, guess what? I'd find a way to make it happen instead of telling you about it. Because if I tell you about it, you can't do nothing about it anyway. So why am I talking to you? You can't feed God. So how can I, why am, why am I going to tell you? And, and people, people tend to, everything's going on wrong. They tell everybody they can't do nothing about it anyway. Why are you talking to cousin Bobo and Pookie and on, on Simi Simi and all these people? They, they can't do nothing about you, what you're going through. <laughs> so why tell them? Because again, the flesh, the devil in the world loves to pronounce what it's doing, especially against you who say you're Christian. It says, the Lord made them to hear. So the sound in the spirit realm changed. And all of a sudden they're hearing now, man, we thought we had it made. We got to get out of here. They left. They didn't go back into the tent. They didn't, they didn't untie the horses. They didn't pick up their saddlebags. They didn't pick up anything, William. William, they just, boy, they said, it's time to go. <laughs> they, just, they just left. And they left everything that they had bought. Isn't God good, boy? To take the wealth of the sinner and give it to his children. God is just like that. See, these are the things that motivate you when you're in destiny stride, when you're going and you're making it happen. It always motivates you. You don't listen to nobody tell you about, oh, it's going to be like, well, man, you know, I just don't know what it's going to be. No, you don't know, but you need to find out, and I can tell you. You know, they're talking and running all, you know, putting all those words. You're the one that's spending up time so fast. Because guess what? All you're doing is running your mouth, and running your mouth eats up time. And so guess what? All over the world, people just eating up time every day, just talking about nothing. And don't realize that, guess what? They're in God's plan so that God can bring this world to an end. Take it out. Talk. <laughs> but talking is just bringing it to pass. Because it's coming. He it says this. Y'all with me? We got a few more minutes. Let's, let's, let's work this thing out now. All right? For the Lord made the host of the Syrians to hear. All right? So to hear means that there was a sound. God's the author of all languages, okay? So God speaks a language of fear to them that there's another army here that's so large, you guys can hear them all over the country coming. <laughs> it's so, they're so tremendously, and they're, they're, they're fitted, and you can feel the ground shaking. And they can hear this coming, and they're going like, look, I ain't waiting on you, Myrtle. I'm leaving, all right? You, and it says, it says, it says, and listen, this, this is a wow. See, these are the things that happen when you open up your mouth, but when you open them up in faith, when I substitute what I see for what I want to see, the Lord made them to hear chariots, horses, the noise of a great host, and they said one to another, Man, yesterday we was laughing about this deal. But it ain't no deal tonight. <laughs> the deal is gone. Lo, the king, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites, the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Oh, man, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. When, when God starts throwing stuff out there, this is what happens with the enemy. You know? And you got to realize, these things are not here for us to just read it. Oh, these are all just stories, whatever. No, the Holy Spirit imprint these things in, in this word so that you and I would know how to deal with things. And when we're, when we're believing God, how, what we need to do, we need to stand on what God has said. Don't, don't substitute anything that the enemy is bringing to you, but just stand and keep your ground so that later on you can be just like Sarah. You can say, the Lord has made me laugh. 
And it says, boy, wherefore they rose and fled. They didn't need no flashlight. <laughs> no, no ever ready bunny was there to give them light. They left their tents. How can you outrun a horse? <laughs> See, their intention was not to outrun the horses that they had, but it was to hide. It was to hide. It was to run to the point that if I had to hide, I could hide. If I'm on my horse, I can't hide. <laughs> there might be a faster horse out there to catch me. Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight. They left their tents, they left their horses, they left their asses, even the camp as it was, and they fled for their life. And when the lepers came to the uttermost parts of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink. I bet you they had a good time, boy. <laughs> I bet you they had a good time. They did eat and drink, and they carried this silver and gold. Boy, these boys are looking out for the future. <laughs> Gold and silver and raiment, and they went and hid it, and they came again and they entered into another tent. Boy, these boys was these boys was tight, boy. And then they thought, and this is what makes us so special. When we care, we become an instrument of healing to somebody else. As I told you in the beginning, when we care. And it says, they said to one another, We do not well this day for us is a day of good tidings and if we hold our peace and if we tarry till the morning light some mischief will come upon us now therefore come that we may go and tell the king's household see when you, be, when you care God makes sure that you become an instrument of healing for somebody else a resource for somebody else something for somebody else this is what destiny is all about. It changes your character. It changes your perception about how you see things. It changes how you think about things, and you start having a kingdom viewpoint of everything instead of a world viewpoint. See, and this is why I tell you guys, destiny has a voice, and I got to stop tonight. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, read this some more for yourself because what it shows you is that when God says something. You should begin to expect to see something you've never seen before. See? Tomorrow about this time. Expect to see. What What do you mean tomorrow about this time? You don't see this right now. People are dying. But if you take what God says, you'll see what you've never seen before. This is destiny. This is the life that you and I have. And this is why it is so worth serving the Lord with gladness. Because no matter what kind of situation you're in, he's got an answer for it. I call him the Lord God for everything, and he is for everything. So God bless you. Thank you guys for joining us tonight. I pray that uh, the message to you, okay, because it's not the same to everyone, but the message to you tonight, as you listen to me and you heard the Lord talking to you, maybe all you got out of it was a part of being able to be a caring, more caring person. So that you can become a better instrument for the Lord. That's great. Maybe you understand that God's a God of restoration. That's great. But whatever you do, take the word of God, build an atmosphere around you so that that atmosphere can become, become that, just like I hear rain in here, it can become rain on your seed that you sow. It can cause that that you've been believing to grow. So God bless you. Thank you for your time. Apostle Chastine Rock. Hey, listen, the Lord is Lord. Trust him with all your heart because he loves you. He loves you tremendously. He wouldn't have given Jesus if there was anything that he wanted to withhold from us. He gave it all so that you could have it all. Thank him every day. Serve him with gladness in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well, I hope